pulmonary embolism or commonly abbreviated PE is the topic for this video and an embolism is essentially a blood clot and it starts off as a thrombus or thrombi is the plural and once it starts moving uh, in the body it's known as an embolus and the um, most common uh, location that these uh, thrombus originate is in the calf area so lower extremities and eventually they tr can they can uh, travel to the lung and once that happens it's known as a PE pulmonary embolism and there's something called Virchow's triad and these three things are what is known as the risk factors for developing a thrombus and they are stasis stasis is also immobility so somebody for example who's bedridden uh, endothelial damage so some sort of uh, trauma or injury that can happen the last one is some inherent or intrinsic hypercoagulability state and all that means is some a disorder that the patient has that makes it more likely that they will form a blood clot. So remember that risk factors for developing the DVT, the deep venous thrombosis that begins in the lower extremities. So once it travels to the lung and becomes a PE, that is very serious. And to give you an idea of how serious it is, 10% uh, of patients can die uh, within one hour. So th this is actually a very tragic um, uh, occurrence. It can happen in people quite young. I've personally seen it happen in someone as young as 32. Um, and it's also a very challenging diagnosis because you don't always look for it when somebody comes in with symptoms. So what are the symptoms? Well, unfortunately, they're very nonspecific. Difficulty breathing, chest pain. Um, in particular pleuritic chest pain which means chest pain when a person takes a deep breath um, person may have cough so as you can see very nonspecific physical exam findings uh, on if you take the vitals increased respiratory rate increased heart rate um, difficult diagnosis um, because you don't always think of PE but if you do think of PE there's some immediate steps you need to take and those immediate diagnostic steps the key diagnostic step is either a VQ scan and VQ is an abbreviation for ventilation perfusion or a more modern or more common is a spiral CT and the uh, these tests will give you a, a clear indication of whether the person has a pulmonary embolism now, just I wanted to mention the VQ scan, the results are given as a private probability. When the results come back, it's given either as a high probability, or a medium probability, or a low probability. And that, that's just how the, the results come back. And um, the high probability of PE is obviously the one that tells you that it's most likely a pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. Um, more commonly they do the spiral CT and you will even see that on licensing exams in terms of a diagnostic test. Now how do you treat it? You're looking at two medications, very common, very popular, heparin and warfarin. And uh, these are the mainstay of treatment of acute DVT and pulmonary embolism. Uh, usually this is given as a long term, this is more acute in the long term. So let's look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like as a patient presentation. A pregnant woman develops deep, boring pain of her left thigh muscles associated with swelling and enhanced warmth of the same leg. Pain is worsened by extending the foot. The superficial veins of the leg are engorged. Her condition puts her at risk of which of the following? Well, interesting question. Uh, this woman, this... Uh, Pain is worsened by extending the foot is known as home end sign. This woman has a DVT. And um, the fact that she's pregnant increases her risk. 
uh, particularly in the third trimester, although it doesn't say in this question what trimester she's in. The question is essentially asking you what is she at risk of developing because of this DVT, and the answer, of course, is a pulmonary embolism. And uh, this question, a 79-year-old man who lives in a retirement community is admitted to the hospital with chest pain, shortness of breath, and lethargy. Past medical history is significant for right upper lobe resection for small cell lung cancer and a stroke many years ago. Since his stroke, he has been relatively inactive and is minimally mobile in his wheelchair. His only meds include aspirin and a stool softener. Temperature is normal, pulse is 120, blood pressure is 100 over 60, and respirations are 24. The patient appears to be in moderate distress. Physical exam reveals lungs clear to auscultation, tachycardia, without murmurs, one plus pitting edema in both lower extremities. He denies any pain in his legs. An electrocardiogram shows sinus tachycardia. Chest x-ray shows mild cardiomegaly, volume loss in the right upper lung, bibasilar atelectasis. Arterial blood gas values while breathing room air are PO2 60, PCO2 53, and pH of 31. Most appropriate next step is, well, uh, this patient is essentially um, presenting with signs of the pulmonary embolism. Um, he has a prior history of cancer, right here, lung cancer. Um, he's also very immobile, minimally mobile, and if you remember Virchow's triad, that's one of the risk factors of developing a DVT. And he needs uh, to have an appropriate study done to diagnose this as quickly as possible. And of all these this is the right one. There's another uh, test, of course, called a spiral CT, which is not mentioned there in the answer choices. So diagnosing a PE uh, can be either done by a VQ scan or a spiral CT.